How's it going star seekers? I hope you're all having a fantastic day and welcome back to the channel where today we're going to be taking a look at Missile Dancer, a vertical schmuck where you pilot a fighter jet and have to take down waves of enemies and huge bosses. But there's a bit of a twist with this one as your bullets can't damage enemies and instead are used to shoot down incoming missiles while you look onto the enemies and blow them out of the sky with your own missiles. This gameplay mechanic is certainly a diversion from the traditional schmuck formula but does it change things up enough to make Missile Dancer stand out from the crowd? Let's jet on into this review and find out. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified of new Nintendo Switch game reviews I upload every few days. So kicking things off, you can first take a look at the how to play menu which gives you a rundown of the game's very simple controls, which basically come down to moving your jet around with a left thumbstick or d-pad and firing your guns and missiles with any of the face buttons or the r button. Now Missile Dancer can be played solo or in 2 player co-op mode and the game has two different game modes to choose from. First we're going to be checking out the standard arcade mode which offers three different difficulty options to choose from, those being normal, hard and extreme difficulties. Being a bit pants at shmups and expecting the usual hardcore level of difficulty present in many of the genre's games, I opted for normal difficulty and got to work in the game's first level, which I had a surprisingly easy time at after learning that colliding with enemies or the missiles could kill me in a single hit. Now as stated before, your bullets can't damage enemies and are only used to shoot down the missiles that they fire at you, so instead you must hold your fire button down which expands a purple circle around you. This purple circle functions as your lock on zone and you'll automatically lock onto enemies who enter it. Then it's just a case of releasing your fire button momentarily to fire off a volley of missiles which home in on enemies and destroy them. In general, more smaller enemies only take a single missile to destroy and you can build up a combo which earns your extra points if you manage to shoot down a series of enemies in a row. Enemies also drop purple crystals which offer additional points when you complete a stage but dying will reset your gem counter to zero so you need to perform a deathless run to earn the most points in levels. Now as you work your way through the game's 8 levels, you'll encounter a host of different enemies, most of which fire standard missiles at you, but there are a few who fire larger missiles or drop flurries of bombs behind themselves. In general, enemy variety is ok, though I only counted around 6 or 7 different enemies which often fly in similar formations. Levels themselves do add a little more variety to gameplay, as aside from the standard opener levels, there are also a few levels which involve flying down tunnels, avoiding the walls and breaking blocks to clear a way forward. Now as with other shmups, Missile Dancer offers a couple of power ups to up your firepower with. First you have missile power ups which increase the number of missiles you fire in a single volley and second you have a ranged power up which increases the size of your lock on circle. Your current power level for these two can be seen in the bottom left of the screen but dying will reduce the level of both of them which can make things a little more challenging until you snag a few more power ups to build it back up. So each level in Missile Dancer features its own boss, you get a sneak preview of them before the level begins and at the end of the level naturally you'll face off against them trading missiles until you blast them out of the sky. As with the standard enemies, bosses have a variety of attacks and movement patterns for you to learn and while they do offer a reasonable challenge, they're still pretty easy to take down on normal mode. Following their destruction, your points are then totted up and then it's on to the next level and more missile massacring. Now as I said before, the game's normal mode is actually pretty easy and that makes the game pretty accessible for less than skilled players like me. Whacking the game up to extreme mode does increase the challenge, however I didn't find it to be a significant jump in difficulty compared to normal mode. Enemies move and fire the missiles a little faster and from what I could tell you do face a few extra enemies but I didn't experience anything overly challenging. The bosses also fire faster and unlike normal mode a few additional enemies appear during the boss fights but again I was able to beat these bosses after only a couple of attempts so if you're used to difficult schmubs then you'll likely breeze through Missile Dancer with relative ease. Now in addition to the arcade mode you have against the clock mode which gives you 3 minutes to earn as many points as you can. 
This mode sort of acts like a boss rush mode with each boss appearing after only a few waves of enemies and both arcade and against the clock mode have their own leaderboards but unfortunately they're offline so there's no competing against other players around the world. So when it comes to my gameplay experience with Missile Dancer, it was a positive one in the fact that it wasn't overly difficult and I was actually able to complete the game. Though despite gameplay being pretty fun and the game's mechanics having something different to offer, the fun was relatively short-lived as levels in general in Missile Dancer are quite short, taking around 3 minutes each to complete. This combination of mild difficulty and brief levels may not be enough to warrant the game's price for some people, especially those more accustomed to bullet hell style shoot em ups, and the offline leaderboards don't offer the same level of replayability that comes with online competitiveness. Now when it comes to the game's visuals, Missile Dancer looks pretty good. There's some nice sprite work going on and it definitely has that classic arcade shmup vibe. However, many sprites like the lock on circle, pick up text and smoke from destroyed enemies have a flickering effect and the screen frequently flashes white when you destroy enemies. I found this could be a little hard on the eyes and sometimes it made it difficult to keep track of your jet and enemy missiles. Audio wise we get some nice retro sound effects and an enjoyable classic shmup soundtrack to blast along to. One thing I did like about the game though was the inclusion of Tate mode which allows you to rotate your Nintendo Switch 90 degrees and play vertically which is great if you have something like a flip grip. In all I personally found Missile Dancer to be an enjoyable shmup and its accessible gameplay provided a reasonably stress free experience albeit a relatively brief one. So now let's get on to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars and this rating is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of a title's gameplay and whether I think it offers value for money to potential buyers. For a rating I'm going to be giving Missile Dancer 3 out of 5 stars. If you're looking for a game to ease you into the shmup genre or something a little different I recommend giving Missile Dancer a go. Just don't go in expecting the same level of difficulty present in more bullet hell oriented games on the Switch such as Red Death or Task Force Campus. You can get Missile Dancer from the UK Switch eShop for £8.99 or from the US eShop for $9.99. Alternatively, the original version of the game is also available on the Apple and Android app stores or Steam. And that's it for this review of Missile Dancer, so hit that like button if you enjoyed the review and let me know what you thought about it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Switch game reviews and content and head on over to the Star Seekers Discord server to join its growing community. For now though I just want to thank you all once again for watching and until next time take care and game on.